everybody, JC here with another TNI Toy Review. And today's review is in association with MarvelousNews.com, your number one news source for everything Marvel. And for today's review, we're going to be taking a look at the upcoming Marvel Legends Infinite Series 3-pack from Hasbro. Now this 3-pack is going to be a Target exclusive. I don't have a firm release date on it yet. Probably should be out in the next couple of months, but again, I don't have any kind of real firm release date. It comes packaged in the same style of window box packaging we've seen with uh, previous box sets. You've got the Avengers logo up top, you've got the Marvel Legends Infinite Series down below, the figures are clearly displayed in the window box packaging. On the sides you have some artwork of the three characters, it's the same on both sides, and then on the back we have a look at all three figures, a brief bio for each figure with multiple languages, and and then some legalese down below. Okay, so let's get this open and take a look at what's inside. Okay, so here's a look at the figures outside of the packaging. Now these are basically all reuse of existing molds. The Hulk figure is a reuse of the Avengers Age of Ultron Hulk movie figure with a different head sculpt, different paint scheme, different color, shade of green, and he's got brown pants instead of dark navy without the red stripes. Still suffers from that, his feet always wanting to fall backwards. Uh, the Vision figure is just a repaint done with white translucent plastic of the Vision figure that we just got in the Hulkbuster Build-A-Figure wave. And then the Ultron figure is primarily a reuse of the Ultimate Beetle figure from the Spider-Man Legends wave. Thanks for Dominic on the heads up for that one. Okay, so we'll start off looking at the Hulk figure from the set. And as I mentioned before, this is just a repaint of the Avengers Age of Ultron Hulk figure that we got a couple waves ago from Hasbro. Only difference is that, well, the green is a little bit different c color, so this is uh, a lighter green than the more olive green that they used on the movie figure. It doesn't have the red striping. The pants are now brown as opposed to the navy uh, blue, and they've given it a different head sculpt to look like the appearance in the Marvel Now uh, titles. Now, it would have been nice if they had at least maybe included the kind of funky armor that he wore at the beginning of the Marvel Now stories, the time travel armor or whatever it was. But, I mean, not that I really, you know, they did that with the Marvel Universe Hulk, and I don't even really display my Hulk figure with that. But it, I guess it would have been a, a cool added addition since this is basically just a repaint. So, the figure stands... just about a little over eight inches tall and here he is next to the Marvel Now Captain America the Marvel Now Iron Man and Thor so you know the scale works pretty well the Iron Man's a little bit on the short side and Thor Actually, Thor fits pretty well with this figure, even though I kind of think this Thor is a little bit on the tall side. But compared to Hulk, he, he's about he's a little shorter than Hulk, which seems about right. Over articulation, even though it's exactly the same as that movie Hulk figure, heads on a ball joint so he can look left and right. Not really much in the way of up or down movement on this one. Arms are attached with your standard ball hinge joints. He can get his arms out good. He's got good rotation. He's got the bicep swivel. He's got the double hinged elbows and he's got the swivel at the wrist and he's got hinges on the wrist so he can get up and down movement. Both hands are sculpted in closed fists. He's got the um, midsection joint so he's got rotation on, at the midsection. A little bit of down crunch um, and can look up a little bit there at the midsection. No waist swivel on this one. Ball hinge joints for the legs. Can do the splits good. Can get his legs out good can do his leg out and back. He's got the thigh swivel, he's got the double jointed knees, and he's got the ankle pivot. Though he can't, he can do his foot down good. Um, you can't really do the foot up very well. And that does kind of somewhat keep him from, uh, it has him fall over sometimes because of that. But other than that, you know, articulation on the figure is pretty good. Okay, so here's a look at the Vision figure. And as I said, this is just a repaint of the the vision figure that came in the Hulkbuster build a figure wave. Now I don't actually have that figure anymore. I sent it on to Shardimus Prime so he could review it for you guys as well. 
Um, so I don't have it for you here to do a comparison, but it is basically the same figure, just done with white translucent plastic. Now, I remember the story where he basically donned all white when he basically got his program wiped or you know became emotionless for a while there in West Coast Avengers. Don't know if he's supposed to be translucent because this is his phasing form or something. I mean, it's kind of a cool look for him, but I don't really, you know, when I thought of the White Vision story, I don't really think of him being transparent. But I guess, you know, like I said, he has that phasing ability, so I guess that's what this is supposed to be mimicking. He's got, so it's all just white, you know, and again with translucent, so you can kind of see through it. I mean, it's not completely translucent, so you got white paint mixed with translucent plastic, so it gives you that kind of ghost effect. It looks pretty good for the most part. The head's got black eyes, and the mind stone, or whatever you want to call it, um, up on his head is now white with a black outline. He's got the black outline on his chest painted. So that all looks pretty good. Now they did give him different feet. Um, he's got basically, he doesn't wear any shoes, so you can see his toes. And then they got rid of the grabby spider hand for his uh, left hand and have given him two closed fists on this one. And the cape, just like on the uh, regular version, pops off. It again is done with like translucent plastic. I got a little black mark on mine, but not any big deal. You can see here he is from the back. So it's kind of a cool figure. Um, it, and again, if you if you have that Age of Ultron Hulk figure yet, then you know what to expect with this one. And this figure stands at about six and a quarter inches tall. Articulation is exactly the same as that Hulkbuster figure. Uh, heads on a ball, hinge joint, so he can look up good, he can look down good, he can look left and right. Arms are attached with your standard ball hinge joint so he can get his arm out good. He's got good rotation at the arm. He's got the bicep swivel, double hinged elbow, swivels at the wrist, up and down. I mean, this is basically the Bucky Cap mold. Yeah, I guess I should iterate that. It is the same mold as the Vision, but basically using that Bucky Cap mold. He's got the swivel at the waist. He's got the crunch. He can look up. He can do the splits about that much. He can get his leg forward. Uh, with the cape, you can still do the leg back a little bit. He's got the thigh swivel. He's got the double jointed knees. He's got the boot cuff swivel. He can get his foot down good and up pretty good. And he's got ankle pivot, of course. And then they've actually not given him any peg holes on the bottom of his feet for this one. So for the Ultron figure, as I mentioned before, this is primarily just a reuse of the Ultimate Beetle figure from the Spider-Man Legends line. It's got different lower arms, but the feet, the legs, the body are all the same. The head is new. Now, I really like the head. I think it's pretty comic book accurate. I like the earpieces that they've done. And he's got the little spikes on the top of his head, which I, I think some Ultrons have had. Or there's been a lot of uh, incarnations of Ultron over the years, so it's hard to keep track exactly which what is considered accurate. So, But I like the head. They've used a neon orange for the eyes and the mouth and they've given some black coloring in the mouth as well to give it that ionic energy look which I think looks pretty good. Now I do think if they'd used more of a bright red as opposed to orange it would have looked better but I think they went with orange over red because I think the five pack Ultron that comes in that Disney store exclusive over in the UK used red and so they probably wanted to differentiate the two figures a bit. He's got these power nodes, which is my least favorite thing about the figure. Again, I don't really recall these on Ultron, but it, with one of the incarnations of him over the years, that it's possible he had that. It's just not something I really think of when I think of Ultron. And I just don't think it looks as good. They've done a red paint with a not as bright orange as what they used on the mouth and eyes, but it's, it's a somewhat neon kind of orange color that they've just done like little dots on with the red. I think it would have maybe looked better if they made these like tran dark translucent red plastic. I think that would have had a cooler effect, but as it is, they just painted it. And I just, like I said, I don't really like the overall look of that. 
The body itself, as I said, is the reuse of the um, beetle figure. And I think it looks, I think it works well for Ultron. You know, it's very armorized. They've used a dark silver metallic paint throughout most of the body, which I think looks pretty good for the most part. He's got the two toes for the feet, which again comes from the beetle figure, but I do think that's kind of reminiscent of the feet that they used on the old Toy Biz Ultron figure. So it doesn't bother me too much. Ultron stands at about six and a half inches tall, maybe a little bit taller if you count to the tips of his uh, ears. It's a little bit taller than six and a half inches. Okay, so articulation on this figure is pretty good. And if you have the beetle figure, you know what to expect with it. The head is on a ball hinge joint, so he can look left and right with no problem. And he's got good up and down movement with the head. Arms are attached with your standard ball hinge joint, so he can get his arm out good. And he's got good rotation there at the arm. He's got the bicep swivel, he's got a double hinged elbow, and then he's got the swivel and the hinges on the wrist, so he's got good up and down movement with the hands. He's got the ab crunch joint, so he can crunch down good, and he can look back pretty good. He's got a waist swivel. Now the waist swivel joint on mine is really loose, so that's probably just with my figure, but it is very loose there at the waist. Legs are attached with ball joints, so he can do the splits about that much. He can get his leg forward good. He can get his foot down good. He's got the double jointed knee, so he's got good bending at the knee. He's got a thigh swivel. He can get his uh, leg back out and back. And then he's got the ankle pivot. And then two peg holes on the bottom of his feet for this one. Okay, so that's my view. Overall, I have kind of mixed feelings about this set. You know, the figures aren't too bad, but they are pretty much just reissues. The Hulk figure was the one I was originally most excited about when the set was announced. I was, you know, happy to be getting a modern Marvel Now Hulk to go with the other Marvel Now figures that we've been getting. I was a little disappointed to see it was just a repaint of the Age of Ultron movie figure. Though I do like the new head sculpt on this one, and I do like the choice of green they use for the skin color. The Ultron figure is not bad. You know, the Beetle Ultimate Beetle mold actually makes a pretty good Ultron base. The only thing I don't really, and I like the head sculpt on this one, the only thing I don't really like about it is all the energy nodes throughout the body. The Vision figure is probably my least favorite. Um, just not that wild about the whole white vision. I do like the translucent plastic that they used and that effect. And in fact, had me thinking that this figure would, if you're a customizer, would probably make for a good Iceman figure. So, you know, if you're into customizing, that might be something to consider with this figure. So, you know, like I said, I'm kind of iffy on the set, but, you know, it is nice to get a more modern looking Hulk. So for that reason alone, and I don't have any of the previous Hasbro Ultron figures, so, you know, I, that one kind of makes it an added bonus for me. So, you know, a little bit kind of varies on how just big a fan you are of these characters and, and such. But as it is, like I said, I kind of mixed on, on the set in general. So the, I don't have a firm release date. I think this will set will probably hit target shelves within the next couple of months. But again, that's just really kind of a guess more than anything on my part. We'll have full gallery of images for these figures over at MarvelousNews.com. And then later today, we're going to be kicking off our San Diego Comic Con coverage on all the sites. So for Marvel stuff, you want to check MarvelousNews.com, ToyNewsEye.com. For Transformer news, be sure to check Tformers.com. And for Star Wars news, be sure to check JediInsider.com. And we'll be having San Diego Comic Con coverage throughout the week. Myself, Shardimus Prime, Pixel Dan will all be there. Um, so, you know, stay tuned for that coverage starting later today with Preview Night. So, as always, leave a comment. Let us know what you think. If you're so inclined, please like the video. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. And until next time, I'll catch you later.